Hey everybody, welcome to my first video uh, with a little voiceover here. So I wanted to record this video and it's in, it's really sped up so you can see it uh, quickly, but I wanted to do a voiceover here and talk about some of my thoughts and my process in real time while it, while you're watching the painting build up. So uh, this video is for all of you and I hope you enjoy it. This is my first time doing something like this so it's probably going to be a little rough but uh, I'm going to try to stay focused here and give you guys some good info on what's happening to this painting. Uh, so this particular painting is on my aluminum composite panel that's a ACM panel. It's a rigid support for oil painting. It's really uh, nice to work with and it's pretty much what I always paint on. Uh, I am using here, you can see I'm setting out my palette right now. I'm using a limited palette of titanium white, um, yellow ochre, actually I think that's a raw sienna, a cad red light, and ivory black. Uh, so just those four colors is a really fun challenge to paint with because uh, you have to really really manipulate everything around to get a to get a to get the painting to read like it should um i don't have blue on my palette so the black and the white are my cool colors in this case and so to get those colors to read like they're blue i have to really kind of shift the temperatures of other things around to make things read warmer um, so yeah, here I am, that first little bit, those brown lines, that's my underpainting, and it's really fast. I just do those to get some basic shapes. That first mark I put in uh, is like the horizon line, and then uh, some of those big shapes just purely for placement. Um, from there, I, I kind of laid in that gray uh, ground plane. That's I just mixed up a big old pile of that and started scrubbing it in. Now I am refining that block in a little bit of the figure, the central figure, the only figure in the piece. Um, still pretty loose, but I wanted to get it, a, you know, start to refine it just a little bit more here. Um, back to the palette that I'm using. This this particular limited palette is uh, known as the Zorn palette. Um, a very famous artist used this palette specifically, uh, Zorn, and it's it's amazing what you can get with just these four colors, and uh, yeah, it's really fun. Having a limited palette means you have to uh, solve problems a little bit differently than if you had every color um, at your disposal, so it's a fun little challenge, and it keeps you really, really active in the, in the painting process. So, yep, just still refining the figure here. Um, you can see I, I kind of blocked in the, the jacket that the girl is wearing as the same, same basic color and value as the, uh, as the ground plane there. That's one of those things that just, that just happens when you uh, when you have a limited palette like this. You have to you have to make some real big decisions about you know specifics and typically in this case you overgeneralize things. So there, I'm going to manipulate it a little bit more later on. But yeah, you're just still keying in my darks and my ground plane. Um, yeah, the. Uh, the actual palette is a little bit cut off in the video, but you can you can kind of see what I'm doing down there. I always tell people when they're watching demos and stuff to really look at the uh, palette because the palette is where the artist is doing all all their thinking and all their uh, decision making. So you can learn a lot about an artist by actually looking at the palette more so than the, the painting itself. So starting to add some warm tones in here. You 
can see I grabbed a smaller brush. I try to use as big of brushes as possible for as long as I can, um, unless something is really calling for a smaller brush. So this is this is when I pull out the smaller brushes to get some of this detail within the foliage. And I mean, I guess it's not foliage. These were like dried up seed pods or something. This was a this was in the winter in Colorado is where I got these photo references from. So the little cup there on the left of my palette that I'm dipping my brush in, that's my medium. Um, think of it as, it, for oil painters, medium is like water is for watercolor painters. It's a, it helps you move and manipulate your, your paint. starting to place some of the lighter parts of the sky. Uh, there's a slight gradation from the top of the sky to the, to the sky at the horizon that I thought was really nice and subtle. Um, I felt like this, this uh, piece, the photo reference that I have for this, would really uh, lend itself well to the Zorn palette because it's pretty, it's pretty muted and subdued. Um, with just some some real chromatic hits of a uh, of higher chroma, higher higher brighter colors in certain spots, but they were for the most part the highest chroma was in the red, so I wasn't too afraid of using the Zorn palette here. The hardest part with the Zorn palette is getting the sky to read blue when all you have is black and white. Um, but the trick is you have to basically warm everything else up and then those those cool grays will read more blue. Uh, the nice thing with titanium white and ivory black is they they both do have a cool uh, color characteristic. They're both cool in temperature. So when you mix them together, you don't just get like a neutral gray. It actually is a cooler gray so when you're when you're thinking about painting in color uh, you're not so much thinking about colors specifically as much as you're thinking about color temperature so that's why you hear me saying warmer and cooler colors it's it's all in relation to each other so All right, getting into a little bit more detail here. I'm starting to starting to flesh out the details within the figure a little bit more. I try to always build up my paintings from the biggest decisions I can possibly make and into smaller and smaller and smaller decisions. So I don't want to just jump straight into the figure and all the details there until I have all my big picture kind of values placed like that. And then I also, as you can see here, I'm, I'm really jumping around. I'm not going straight into the figure until it's finished and then moving somewhere else and kind of bouncing all around. Uh, that way I can, I can rest my eyes a little bit and I can come back to the areas that need more detail and I can let it sit for a while uh, while I'm working somewhere else typically. Uh, if there's an issue, it'll start to bug me as if I've let it sit. Uh, so I know I have to go back to that area eventually and, and work it out. I'm applying really thick paint here. This is, there was, uh, the sun was setting right there at the edge of that, like, building or water tower or whatever that thing was. We were in an industrial part of town, so it was some sort of factory silo looking thing um, but there is a really nice like lens flare effect so the part of that building was actually visually it was disappearing because the sun was so bright right in that corner um, it's a really fun effect to try to paint so 
So this is the point where I'm feeling like my values and my colors and everything are starting to come together. Uh, those big picture pieces of information, the really important stuff is the big picture stuff. But once I'm happy with that, then I'm confident into working into some more of the more of the details and more of the uh, more refined uh, characteristics of the scene. Still using pretty big brushes here. You can see every now and then I'm actually pulling out this uh, rosemary brush that I have that has a two foot handle on it. So <laughs> that brush is a new toy for me, but it's it's really fun because it's uh, it lets you stand really far back and paint and make just big, big marks, big decisions. And then here I have pretty much the opposite kind of brush, a very small detail brush. And again, I'm just always kind of refining my drawing through this process. It's not purely about details. It's I'm still carving out some of the sky shapes and carving, pushing and pulling like where the edge of that jacket is. manipulating edges. Edges is a really fun thing to uh, for me to focus on. I like to push and pull the edges around. So you can see in the right those like seed pods that are kind of breaking the, the horizon plane and that are up there in the sky. Some of those are sharp edged and some of those are soft edged. Uh, I typically kind of fuzz all of that back and then I pick and choose where I place the hard edges again. And having the soft edge there already means that I don't have to make a soft edge. I can just leave it there and just add hard edges where I want them. Adding a little bit of texture and detail into the jacket now. She was wearing like this crazy fur coat jacket thing. I don't think it was real fur, but it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a cool texture and a hard one to uh, to get across with paint. Now I always lean on the side of making my uh, my paintings a little bit looser and a little bit more um, yeah I guess loose and painterly and the reason is I, I really like the effect and the idea of uh, completing the painting from viewing it. So there's, there's certain things that just click if you can resist putting all those details in them. Your, your, mind, your mind can actually fill in the gaps. Uh, so I always try to put myself in the, in the, uh, pers in the perspective of a, someone viewing the painting, you know, and what... Uh, how much information do you really have to give uh, for it to come across? So in the portrait itself, it's it's really simple, simple marks. I didn't I didn't really paint the eyes or the mouth or really the nose. I just put some well placed uh, paint strokes and and let it be. So still carving. Now I'm starting to carve into the, the legs a little bit more to get the gesture that she had when she was standing there and posing. Uh, probably one of my favorite parts of this painting was the, the feet and the ankles. I, If you look close at the detail shot at the still of this, you'll notice that there is there's no leg. Uh, she had like where her legging stopped. There was a couple inches before her shoes started, so you can see her ankles. But I just uh, I just kept that the the value and the color of the ground plane. I think it I think it works fine. I don't think it's uh, necessary, but it was a fun little fun little thing for me to do.
So there's a lot more of, uh, once the paintings get to about this level, it, it really is a lot of just sitting back and looking at the painting and having a conversation with the painting to see what it needs, uh, not looking as much at the reference anymore and just looking at the painting now to see, you know, what it needs. Is it working the way it is or does it need more detail or less detail? So it becomes a lot more of looking at the painting and a lot less of working on it. Look at it for five minutes and then go up and make a couple strokes and then step back and look at it again. Doesn't feel like you're working, but you you really are still making a lot of decisions. So we're getting pretty close to the end here. Refining some of these hard, hard edges and soft edges within the, the seed pods that are breaking the plane. It was important for me to keep you know, really have a, a strong sense and control over the edge quality within those particular shapes because uh, because they show a lot of depth moving back into space. Those seed pods, you know, they get smaller and smaller and more and more clumped together. Uh, and those edges, you know, they become they become softer and lost, and less information is is uh, really visible so it all turns into pretty washy brush strokes towards the horizon line but as it's moving forward you know we have to push the edges harder so Overall, I think the Zorn palette was a uh, was a nice choice for this. I think it really gives a sense of that kind of cold Colorado winter, you know, not very colorful environment. Um, the reds really sing with this sunset that's happening, and the the uh, the actual gradation in the sky. I felt like you know i grew up in colorado and i saw that that wintry dusk sunset happen all the time and that was i i feel like it it has that sense it has that spirit of a cold winter night but with clear skies and and uh, calm calm skies So just pushing the uh, some of the power lines in the background just a little bit. That stick that is kind of obstructing the view, that's my mall stick. It's hanging from a, a little bar that I have above my easel, so I don't have to really hold it. It kind of just it, uh, it hangs around until I need it. But in this case, it got in the way of some of the, some of the painting. So all right, that was it. But yeah, that's going to be up on my Patreon as a as one of the tiered paintings for this month. So thanks everyone for listening, and let me know if you liked these. I'd be happy to do more of this kind of thing. So awesome. Thanks. Bye.